everyone. So I decided to do a two part video <laughs> real quick. Um, I'm going to start with how to use the Nearpod add on for you. And then I'm going to transition into how to assign for large amounts of students. So say you have like a sub plan that needs to go out or you're assigning something to an entire grade level and you've surpassed your minimum or your maximum amount of students that are allowed to enter one session. So real quick, how I like to use Nearpod is with my own resources, my own PowerPoints that I upload to Google Slides and then add activities in. And that way it's the exact content that I want to use. Once in a while, I'll use a pre-made Nearpod, but sometimes there's issues such as um, like YouTube video links no longer working because something's been pulled um, or like permissions for our children. If it's not set as a kid video, sometimes your administrative um, settings will prevent the children from watching that video. So I'm just going to click new. I'm going to say file upload. Once that uploads, then I'll be able to open it with um, Google Slides as a Google Slide. So we'll just give that a second. Awesome. I'm gonna go right here. And you'll know whether or not it's opening as a PowerPoint or as a Google Slides. By looking at the top of the page, it would say PowerPoint here, but since it does not, and it has the Google Slides symbol, I'm good to go. And while this would be great in a classroom where I can kind of monitor engagement, this PowerPoint might not be the best. It's more lecture based um, virtually because my students are going to need to be able to participate. So I'm going to use the Nearpod add-on to add in some interactive activities. If you do not have the Nearpod add-on, you're going to want to open a new tab at this point and just simply type Nearpod add-on um, Chrome. And then you're gonna pick the one that says the G Suite Marketplace. So here it says uninstall at the bottom. I had administration force install this for every teacher, but you would just click install. It gives you a Google Drive add-on and a Google Slides add-on. Um, it's extremely useful. So just click install. If you find that it's been blocked by administration, it is worth reaching out and asking them to whitelist um, Nearpod. It's definitely worth the time and the engagement from your students. So the first thing I'm going to do in my Google Slides is this activity is awesome and I usually give it to my students on paper to complete while we're completing this lesson. But since we're virtual, I want them to be able to fill it out on their own. So I'm going to turn this into a draw activity. I'm going to do that by clicking add-ons, Nearpod and open Nearpod. And then on the side, this wonderful menu is going to open eventually. <laughs> and I'm going to actually just click this button in the bottom middle that says convert to draw it. When I do that, it's going to take the slide that I'm currently on and convert it into a draw it activity. I don't have to do anything else, which is wonderful. Once it loads, you'll see my slide in the background and I can actually go in and delete the original slide or I can leave it to have a second to explain the activity before they jump in. So I think I'm going to actually leave it. So what I would maybe do with this slide, since I'm lecturing a lot, is create a fill in the blank. Now, this is just a picture <laughs> because I purchased this um, resource and it's like, just pictures of slides. There's no like interactive. I can't type and cut and paste. But if you have slides where you've physically typed what's on the slide, you'll be able to just cut and paste. But I'm going to click fill in the blanks. And I'm going to move this to the side so I can see. <laughs> and then I'm going to pick what I want this next slide to look like. And maybe I'll go with like this nice green color or blue. Let's do blue. Kind of matches one of those stripes. And I'm just going to say, in 1879, I'm going to type exactly what I see. All right. So once I've typed in my paragraph, cut and pasted for most of us, um, 
I'm going to now select some words that I want them to fill in. So I do want them to know that it comes from Portugal. So Portuguese is going to be my first word. Um, some guitar, which is why I left some space here. A small guitar-like instrument called a machete. I want them to have that one. And then the word flea. Now that I've picked my four words, my students, when they complete this slide, will simply fill in the blank after I have lectured for about a minute. What I might do is have my students, after this slide, um, show me how to hold a ukulele. So on in my menu on the side, something that I do a lot of is to include flip grids. I haven't made this flip grid yet. I'm actually modifying this for my own class. Um, but I would create a flip grid that says, show me how you hold your uke. And I would just put the teacher URL, which would be at the top of the screen. And then the student URL, which is what happens, what, what is generated when you click share. And my students would be able to show me themselves holding the ukulele correctly. I can see on the screen, but say a child's in a situation where they can't have their video on, that's useful. Um, and then there is one more thing. This PowerPoint is supposed to have a lot of videos. And that is something that kind of disappeared a little bit and will not be available <laughs> when I switch over to Nearpod. So what I would then do is click video. These are safe, safe share links. So I might actually have to um, you know, do this a little differently, but you just click on YouTube and then, yeah, there's no results. So I would have to find the video on my own on YouTube. Maybe we'll do a different one this year because they've already seen so many. So maybe we'll do like Bohemian Rhapsody. Maybe they'll be into that. And I would just pull that YouTube link. Rico was born in 2014. And I will put that link in here and it'll just pull up the YouTube video. Do make sure that you preview them if you are doing it this way um, to make sure that they're fine. But once I've done that, I'll be able to embed questions throughout. I'm not going to right now. Um, on Nearpod, though, when you are showing this lesson to students or they are completing it independently, if you're showing with screen share on your screen and they're what they have the Nearpod open, they will. It'll just direct them to look at the teacher's screen, look at the the meeting or the teacher's screen, and then when you get to question, then they'll be able to input their answers on the Nearpod screen that they have. So I'm just gonna insert that. I'll go through and make sure I've put in all my videos. I would probably put in another flip grid because we're going to be talking about tuning. Another flip grid of them tuning along with what I'm doing. And when I'm all set and done, I can do it now because I can always go back in and edit. I would click save and go to Nearpod in the lower right corner. So once that saves, it does take a minute, um, and you're going to want to be very sure that you do not close this tab while it's saving. It does cause some issues, um, and then I found that I've had to make a copy of my slides and start over with the saving process. It, was, it didn't take too long, but it does cause some issues if you close it before it's saved fully. But once you're saved, you have a couple options. Say I need to assign this as a student paced lesson because it's for a substitute teacher. Not that I would ever have a substitute teacher introduce ukulele. Um, but it's generated a code. You'll be able to share that link. But say you need multiple sessions, you would just click on it again and launch a new student paced lesson. So now I have a new code, and when I click out of this and go back in, I have two sessions. You can, I think there's a limit on 40 on the free accounts. I think that's what someone said. Um, but you can launch as many sessions as you need with different codes, and then you would just put those links in to your Google Classrooms separately or provide those links to your substitute teacher. 
those codes to your sub. Um, you can also, for live participation, I'm just going to preview it because it will show you the student end and what it looks like. But you can preview these lessons. You can full screen and see what the student would see as they complete it. The slides look a little smaller, but I haven't really found that to be an issue. Um, this was supposed to click and open a video. It does not now, so I'll have to include a video after that. I have my little paragraph, and on the student end, they would drag and drop those words up there. For younger students, it's a little challenging for them to do that, so you might want to just do matching with like a picture and like the vocab words. Um, but they do also have the ability to fill in things with text. Um, it works really well. I like it. I do like the preview that you can see what the students would see. We have our video. I hope that everything runs really smoothly for you. Hopefully that makes it a little bit easier to take what you already have. Don't reinvent the wheel, just add to it.